Okay, hello everybody and welcome back. This is going to be a new Let's Play, and this is going to be a new Let's Play in more ways than one because I have never played this game before. Yes, we're now entering uncharted Yu-Gi-Oh! territory, at least for me. Uh, I've played Forbidden Memories plenty of times. I've played Duelists of the Roses at least twice. Uh, but I have never... I didn't even know this game existed, honestly. Uh, since I had the PS2 emulator ready to go, I looked up to see some other Yu-Gi-Oh! games for the PlayStation 2. And uh, this one was a very prominent one. I think it was the... Um, uh, it was Duelists of the Roses, this one, Capsule Monster Coliseum, and I think there's a GX game, like GX Tag Force, uh, that I actually might check out too, get into the GX era of things. But... This is Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monster Coliseum. And probably, uh, at least most people I feel like if you're watching this at this point, have probably at least heard of Capsule Monsters. Uh, it had some interesting uh, uses uh, throughout the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise. It was featured in the Yu-Gi-Oh! manga. Uh, and Yu-Gi-Oh! Season Zero, I believe. So Season Zero was a season that was never actually dubbed in English, but uh, it was like the prototype to what Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters would become. Uh, back in Season Zero, and in the early forms of the manga, in fact, um, it, the, the focus of the manga wasn't all about the card game. It was more about a bunch of different types of gaming, uh, and Capsule Monsters was, I believe, one type of game that they would play. Uh, in the anime, though, there, there was kind of a spin-off uh, anime season, not even really a season, it was more of like a side story, it was only like a few episodes, that was uh, the Capsule Monsters arc, that was dubbed, and you may remember watching on Kids WB back in the day, I actually have the DVDs of Capsule Monsters, because a fan of mine sent me like everything in that first generation of Yu-Gi-Oh, so I have that, um, and uh, many people will probably notice right away, yeah, this was Yu-Gi-Oh!'s attempt at capitalizing on Pokemon, which I feel like they didn't need to try, <laughs> you know? Like, Yu-Gi-Oh! was already fairly successful on their own. They did not need to piggyback on Pokemon, but I get it from a marketing standpoint. Like, somebody in a boardroom somewhere in Japan was like, this is what's successful! Pokemon! Monsters in balls! And they're like, all right, we need to do that too, except with Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, there's literally a Yu-Gi-Oh card. I think he's called Thunder Kid or Thunder Boy or something like that. That is a small yellow rat-like monster that uses electricity. It, it's literally a one-for-one -one carbon copy of uh, Pikachu. So that's how marketing works. That's how advertising is. If you see something successful, try to rip it off, I guess. Um, but that was the anime. I, 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 even as a kid, and that was, to be fair, that was kind of nearing the end of when I was personally enjoying Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, near the end of the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, I remember I was getting older, and I didn't really like the story as much. I, I, I wasn't, like, as entertained by it as I used to be. Uh, I was entering high school at this point, keep in mind, so, you know, you gotta get beyond all those kid, all those kid games, you know, like those, uh, duel monsters, you know? Uh, because it wasn't really cool anymore to like Yu-Gi-Oh! So, the anime I remember not liking all too much, but this is a, a video game, completely different format. I have no idea. I mean, I ran the game earlier, like the first five minutes, just to kind of get a handle. Like, I watched the opening cinematic, which we're going to see here in a second, to just kind of get, you know, make sure it worked on the emulator. But I, I have no idea how to play this game. I don't even know what I'm doing here. So, this may very well, this first part is probably just going to be an introductory kind of thing for me playing the game. I don't know how long I'm going to be here tonight. I don't know how long I'm going to play the game for. Uh, and, uh, yeah, this is just really my first impressions, if anything. Um, <laughs> yes, it's uh, Kamenari, uh What was it called? Uh, somebody had it in the chat there. Your, uh, your audio seems very high, very clippy. Uh, hold on. I knew, I knew something was going to happen with my audio. That, that same problem happened yesterday or two days ago when i was part of the um the eem sama art contest with roger hold on let me listen to my audio really quick to see how bad it is hold on let me listen to my audio really quick to see how bad it is uh it's not too bad uh i can lower it a little bit it, it i can see where it could clip though if i get too loud which i i'm prone to do oh wait i think i might know the problem hold on a second let me just double check something here ah yep i know why does that always do that okay that should be a lot better 
Uh, my, uh, my, I like to set my mic at 75 for whatever reason. It was maxed out to 100. Sometimes when the mic disconnects and then reconnects, it'll reset the audio levels, and I hate it when it does that. But anyway, okay, that should be a lot better. I shouldn't clip as much now. But, uh, yeah, somebody had it. Uh, what was it? Like, Kaminari Kozo or something like that was, like, the name of the Pokemon. Yeah, here it is. Ah, I had it. What was it called? Kaminari Kozo. You know, the, the cooler Pikachu. Eh, you know. That's how it is. Uh, no. Now it's quiet. Audio good for me. See, this is the problem with audio levels. All right, I'll boost it a little bit more, but then we got to get going. I've already wasted enough time here. Um, <laughs> problem with audio levels. You know, this could be solved with a very simple thing of having my audio in my headphones as I play the game. But that sounds so weird to me. It sounds so weird to hear my own voice while I'm playing a game or while I'm talking in my headphones, and so I hate that, and that's why I don't do that. But that's probably the correct way to do it if you're running a podcast or something. But we do things we do things a little different here on the Techie 101 YouTube channel. I have no idea how to... I don't know anything about mics or cameras, and yet here I am on YouTube for 13 years. Oh, God, this year will be 14 years on YouTube. Holy shit. All right. Well, with that existential crisis looming, let's get on with it. This will be Yu-Gi-Oh!, Capsule Monster Coliseum for the PlayStation 2. Let me know how audio is. <laughs> Yami Yugi! Yami Bakura! Yami Merrick! <laughs> okay. Yami Seto! Oh, no, just Seto Kaiba. Alright. Game audio seems good. Great. Oh my god! It's like a Marvel movie! Oh god, the detail on the blue eyes looks really good in this one. Holy shit! It's Egyptian Brock Lesnar! Man. Man, they went for a more realistic version of the uh, monsters in this one. I like it. Exodo Hell Flame! I also, that bugged the crap out of me because the Roman Colosseum is spelled like Colossus, like C O L O, and this is spelled C O L I, which bugged the crap out of me when I was looking at the title of this game. I'm like, did they misspell it? By the way, the OST in this game slaps. Just from what I had to listen to with this. And what I got for the starting soon screen, the OSTs are going to be awesome. They're going to be worth it alone. Even if this game sucks, which from what I understand, it really doesn't. In fact, I even saw a mod of this game, people. So there's still fans of this game to this day. So I, I don't think this is going to suck. I think this is going to be a little bit better than the anime version. All right, let's get to it. I don't want to listen to the whole thing again. No. All right, please tell me the controller didn't stop working again. <laughs> It was working 15 minutes ago. There it is. Okay. Campaign mode. Let's go. Let's get that campaign. Let's get the pain. Oh, boy. What do we got? We got an ancient temple with a filter. Welcome to Capsule Monster Coliseum. We're just going to go with that spelling. I think that is one of the correct ways to spell it. But, yeah. R.I.P. Controller. No, we have it. Oh, good, guys. We're just in time for the big tournament. Is that a volcano? Why is there a volcano on this tournament? Why does every tournament Yu-Gi-Oh! have to involve a volcano? All right. Yugi Moto and his alter ego who has been trapped in the Millennium Puzzle. All right. There we go. Yep. That's, that's Yugi, all right. Oh, there's Dark Magician Girl. Best foot forward there. And Rogue Doll. Oh, man, check it out. It's that shellfish guy. All right, so we're in a tournament, and we're going to get the Capsule Monster Coliseum Grand Trophy thing. Okay, cool. Every major tournament of every sport should be played at the base of an active volcano. I want the next Summer Olympics to take place over Krakatoa. 
the next World Cup of football should be played over an active volcano. That's how you make sports fun again. You want Americans to give a crap about soccer? Have them play it over an active volcano, and then we'll talk. All right. So we got a floating... Is this Skypea? I guess we're on Skypea. That's cool. All right. Entrance hall. We're entering a name. Okay. What are we going with, guys? Oh. All right. Whatever name we pick. Let me just throw it out there. We have a heart and a musical note. So I kind of want to incorporate that in some way. Uh, okay, Colosseum. So I'm, th I'm thinking something Roman for this. Uh, you know, like uh, when I played Pokemon Sun and Moon and it was based in Hawaii, I, I named myself Tiking because Tiki, even though a Tiki is, yeah, it's, it's close enough. Um, so let's think of something like, you know, uh, Alexander the Great, who actually does appear in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. <laughs> Alexander the Great is a character. Yeah. Um, Patatas. Pompeii. Ah, I like that. Mm. Gaius Tullius. Oldeth Tony. Trajan. Oh, man, these are some really good ones. Alexander D. Great. I love, I like that one. I like that one. Uh, Alexander is Greek. Yeah, well, Colosseum. I think of the Roman Colosseum. And I think in the anime, they were in South America where there was a temple that Alexander the Great was in. So they don't really seem to give a shit about historical accuracy here. Um, Zoltan. Hmm. Tiberius Claudius Nero. That's not bad. Oldest Tony. I like that one. Alexander the Ape? Tech word. Tech word isn't bad. Nero, heart of the cards. Mm. Caesar. King Zorro. Man, these are all really good ones. I'm really liking the oldest Tony one. Though. I'm, I'm leaning toward that. Or Alexander D. Great. Tiberius Septum. <laughs> Tiberius Septum. Oh, God, that sounds so... Isn't that like a character in the... um? Oh, what was it? The Elden Ring series? Is it like the Elden Ring... Se Not the Elden Ring series. The fucking... Oh, what's it called? The series Oblivion and Skyrim is in. What, what's what's that series? What's that called? Um, The Lost... No, the... Oldest Scrolls or the Elder, the Elder Scrolls. I don't play those games, all right? Elder Scrolls, that's it. Isn't there a character in the Elder Scrolls that's named, like, um, something Septum or something? Every time I think of Septum, I just think of, like, your Septum. Like, I, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, ew. Yeah. Caesar Tech. Elder Scrolls, yeah. Tiber Septum, yeah. Talos. Oh my god. Yeah. Anyway, I gotta pick a name. Alright, so we could go with Oldest Tony. I'm not I'm not seeing I wanna pick something, but I'm not seeing anything good. I'm not I'm not seeing the name, you know, the name. I, I hate to waste everybody's time, but like I need a good name. Something that pops, you know? Skyrim, yeah, the elves outlawed the worship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flux capacity, Tator. <laughs> oh. Scaldy Rain. Gla Gladiator. Okay, I like that. I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna go with Gla... This is so stupid, but I don't care. Gla... D... <laughs> A tour. <laughs> yes. Yes. I like this. I like this. Gladiator. Gladiator. All right, let's go with that. Yeah. I don't think I'm spelling that right, but I don't care. Yes. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, creating symbol. For a quick start, play with the preset settings. 
Okay. I guess we have to purchase a starter kit. I have to go out and purchase a starter kit? How am I going to find a starter kit? I just go to Walmart? Hi, I would like a starter kit for Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monsters. <laughs> oh my god, are there voice acting in this? Hi, Grandpa! Did they get the English voices for this? Grandpa! They did! Yeah! <laughs> it's the first Yu-Gi-Oh! game I think I've ever played. Even Legacy of the Duelist didn't have the, the voices in it. That is so cool! Ah, I thought you would come, Yugi. That's so fucking awesome! That's so cool! I didn't think they would have the names! Dan Green! Dan Green took time out of his day to voice in a video game. Dan Green, I want to thank you personally for everything you've done for anime and Yu-Gi-Oh! And my childhood personally, you know? Dan Green, one of the greatest voice actors of all time. Seriously, Dan Green. Let's have a quick salute to Dan Green. Cheers to Dan Green! There it is. What are you doing? I knew you wouldn't have prepared anything. You're always so impatient. Yeah, that's so like Yugi. He doesn't prepare for anything. Battle City, man, he was late to Battle City. He didn't even have a deck ready. Yugi was one card short and one day late. That's that's Yugi to a T. I brought monsters that you can use in the tournament. Well, thanks, Grandpa. That's my Grandpa. That's my Grandpa! Hold your horses. I never said I was giving you these for free. You gotta pay! You're living in my house for rent free! You gotta pay up! You got all that prize money from those tournaments you won! Duelist Kingdom, Battle City! You're not living in my- you're not eating my food for free, damn it! I'll exchange them for monster points. MP! Monster points? MP! You can earn monster points by MP. winning during the tournament. Keep- ah, I see. Yeah, also it's a little weird. That it's, it's, it's Atem, it's Yami Yugi talking to Solomon as if it's his grandfather when this is clearly Atem that's speaking, but whatever, I don't care. Let me give did, you did some Dan tips. Green also voice regular Yugi? I think they're the same. For the longest time growing up, I thought they were different voice actors. They might be, because there was a thing that they were different, and then I heard that Dan Green voiced both of them. And then I think somebody else told me, no, that was two different voice actors. I think it's, I think they were both voiced by Dan Green, right? Yeah, yeah, so there's not even any reason why they have to be doing this, but okay. Monsters can be separated into light, dark, fire, water, earth, oh, wood, shit. wind, and thunder. That's a lot of, man, they really, Monsters um... Monsters can be separated into light, dark, Oh, he's just gonna fire, keep repeating water, it. earth, wood, wind, and thunder. Okay, so, um, one, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight. So that was eight attributes. They whittled it down to six in the card game. Uh, wind and uh, I mean, wood and thunder are not attributes, but um, actually, I think everything else is light, dark, fire, water, earth, and wind. Yeah. So wood and thunder are the extras. So that's not too bad. In other words, each monster has a different attribute. Okay. And each attribute has a different advantage and disadvantage. Like rock, paper, scissors. Got it. I'll explain what they are, but... Advanced rock, paper, scissors. If you don't think you can remember them, I suggest you take notes. Oh, God, the game itself is telling me to take notes. Okay, well, luckily I have a handy-dandy notepad right next to me. Man, th th okay, what am I getting myself into, guys? <laughs> like, people that have played this game before, is this, like, a super complicated game? Because the game is telling me in the tutorial, you better have a notepad and pen handy, kid. You better be ready to take some fucking notes. This shit's gonna get complicated, all right? Are you ready? Here they are. Okay, what are we doing? Oh, God, all right, we're getting a diagram, all right? Light is strong against dark. All right. And dark is strong against earth. Oh, God, okay. All right, all right, all right. Okay, are you going to stay on that screen so I can write that down? All right, good. All right, the game is at least nice when it, like, okay, here's the chart. Take as much time as you need. <laughs> okay. All right, I think there's a button to check. Well, I'm going to write it down anyway because I'm not taking any chances here. All right, light beats dark. Okay. Dark beats earth. I'm just writing them all down separately. 
I'm not gonna draw like a Venn diagram or anything. Fire is strong against wood. And wood strong and water against is strong against fire. Water? Oh. Okay. Alright, alright. I mean, like a lot of this will be self-explanatory, I'm sure. But um water fire yeah, water strong against fire, like no duh. But I'm, I'm writing it all down. Earth is strong against thunder. Okay. And wood is strong against wind. Okay. Yeah, stop a tornado with some trees. As we all know, trees are great at stopping tornadoes. All right, so Earth beats thunder. I have my little cheat sheet down here. I did this with sacred cards, too. I had to have my little cheat sheet next to me. Wood beats wind. But I love games like this. I love, I love, like a Wind setup like this. Wind is strong against water, and thunder is strong against light. Wind beats water. You think thunder? See, that's the thing. Like you think thunder would be strong enough, strong against water. But okay, wind beats water, and thunder beats light. I think that should be all of them, right? Because we're back to light. That's it. Okay. All right. So that's one, two, three, four. It's eight things I wrote down to kind of keep track of. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. Enaru is stronger than Kizaru. Confirmed right there. Thunder beats, I mean, yeah, thunder beats lightning. There, I mean, light. Yeah. Pokemon rules. I want to see one game that's just like, no, fuck it. Fire is strong against water. How about that? If you remember oh, these God. relationships, it will increase your chances. Well, I wrote them all down, Grandpa. I wrote them all down. Thanks, Grandpa. So only having monsters of a single attribute is dangerous. That's my grandson. You learn quickly. Screw it. I'm going. We're going to go all wood. Wood deck. Who's for the wood deck, everybody? Let's go 100. We're going to go Hashirama Senju with this shit right here. Wood deck. Wood deck. <laughs> However, you should always take your opponent's attribute into account. Does that mean we can have, like, separate decks, like in Duelist of the Roses? Like, we could have, like, an ABC deck to, like, switch out in case we need it? That's another important point to remember. Well, the rest is up to you. All right. I understand. Okay. Okay, so we gotta get, uh, okay, so I guess we get a starter kit for free. Like, we don't have any money, so I guess we just get one for free. Okay, so we got light, dark, fire, water. Can we just pick, yeah, okay, we can pick, oh, actually, we can pick, like, a starter deck. Uh, starter capsules, I guess. Um, all right. Uh, I guess I can only buy one of them. Uh, because it's, it's saying 500. What is, okay, AP. I have no idea what AP is. I have no idea what power points are. This is like Pokemon. Attack points, I guess. Attack points, defense, DF. What's DF? PP, I guess, are power points. Capsule deck, capsule stock. I have no... You, Grandpa, you did not explain to me what any of these numbers are. What any of these words mean. Wood deck! Wood deck! All right, fine. I'm going wood. We're going wood? We're going wood. Uh, our wood deck's going to annihilate wind. We're going to... We're going to destroy my Valentine. Defense and reinforcements. Nothing fancy. This team is made for old-style battle. Oh, that's cool. It, like, tells you what they do, like, in magic. So, light. Excellent support. This team's attacks are not strong, but if you build them up... Uh, kind of like a white uh, deck in, in magic. An elite small team. Nice. Fire is powerful attacks. Kamikaze! That's a word I didn't expect to see... <laughs> <laughs> in a Yu-Gi-Oh game. Kamikaze! I'm like, all right, cool. Uh, like a fortified castle for those who like to plan their attacks nice and slow. All right, who's a who's a blue deck user in Magic? Come on, come on, let it be known. Let me know the bullshit. Like, all right, I do the blue deck. I'm like, all right, all right, that was fun. Thank you for joining us. You can leave now. You can leave. We don't need you here right now. All right, me, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Blue user here. My for, my preferred deck in Magic, by the way, is uh, either white or black, actually. Black or white are probably my favorites. Um, although I do dabble in green every now and then. I do dabble in green, but uh, I prefer white because that's actually what I learned on, and I just really like the uh, the setup and stuff. And like I, I just like that that kind of strategy with white. Yeah. Blue represents. <laughs> now we're just now we're just starting a Magic: The Gathering like race war in the, in the chat. Oh. Mm. 
Uh, blue better be leaving! <laughs> White tech for life! <laughs> oh my god. All right, I like Fortified Castle for those who like to plan their attacks nice and slow. Earth is uh, rock solid. Wind is uh, race up to the opponents and make devastating attacks. Beware though, this team is vulnerable to enemy attack. Not really fun, I already thought it would. Kabang! Experience ultra attack ability. The catch, this team doesn't have an ounce of defense. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, you know what? I think Wood. I was doing it as a meme, but I think Wood. I think the Hashirama Senshu route is actually the way to go. So I'm going to go with a Wood deck. I'm going to go Wood. Yeah, let's go Wood. You got to go Fire. Now, Fire is too, like, direct attack. Like, oh, Warrior. I'm not into that, you know. All right. So now I guess we just get to pick an area. So we got like the Roman Colosseum. Uh, oh, I guess we can only go to area one now. All right, I guess we'll have to do this area one then. All right. Shit. <laughs> the first duel. Okay, I might have to reset this. Might have to do a reset on this, ladies and gentlemen. Now, everybody that's the blue player in the chat is like, see, this is why blue is superior. <laughs> like, crap. You know what? Let's do it, though. Hold on a second. Stage details. An ancient city, forgotten long ago. However, there's still plentiful water. Many of the landforms are advantageous for water attribute monsters. Verify return. What does verify mean? Like I could verify whether... Okay. All right, I, I guess verify means we go into the game, I guess. Okay. Man, Joey's got some cool sneakers. I want those sneakers. Oh, we could just look at the... All right, that's a cool feature. Oh, that is so cool. Can we zoom in and out? Oh, that's neat. That's so cool. Look at that. Man, the PlayStation 2, I think this is honestly... This is going to be weird to say. I think the PS2 honestly flourished most when it came to, like, puzzle and strategy games like this. Because, like, it's not crazy high action, but the detail on, like, some of these more simple puzzle games in this kind of 3D environment really, really got to shine. Because, uh, yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I guess so. All right. Well, I mean, we either... We're going into this as an underdog. Ironic, because we're fighting against Joey, and he's usually the underdog. But, you know what? My electric bill is due... I got an alert on my phone. But you know what? Let's do it. Enter. I don't even know what I have in my capsule deck. Screw it. Let's roll. Let's roll. Baptism by fire, quite literally. It's a full moon tonight. Yeah, it is. Looks creepy. Does he know the rules? Not at all. Not in the slightest. We're gonna figure it out as we go. But you know what? This game doesn't bog us down with a year of tutorials. They're throwing us in. You figure it out. Hiya, Yuke. I've been waiting for you. There you go. Joy. Anime the battle one. lines. And don't think I'm gonna take it easy on you just because you're my friend. Whoa. I'm not holding anything back. Damn straight, Joey. Then let's get started, Joey. Time to duel. I mean, time to capsule. I mean, whatever. Pokemon, go! I choose you, Dark Magician! Alright! Uh, oh, are we just doing like a, like a rock, paper, scissors kind of thing? Alright, we'll do this one. Oh, like uh, highest number goes first? Alright, that's cool. Alright, they're attacking second, so I get to go first. Alright, cool. That's pretty self-explanatory. 
All right, you play Yu-Gi-Oh one way, you kind of play it all ways. Let's figure it out. All right, all right. All right, we got, that's Joey's capsules, I'm imagining. Uh, we got Fire, his setup. Okay. Okay, I'll select my monsters to play with. All right. Wait a sec. What's wrong, Yugi? I don't know how to do this. There's a limit on which monsters you can use. Okay. Which is determined by monster points. Did they, did they flip the characters? Because usually it's Yugi that's like, okay, time to duel. And then it's Atem that's like, hold on, Yugi. You don't know what you're doing. Let me explain. They, they like flipped the characters, which I find it very funny. All right. You mean the points I paid in order to get monsters? Yes. Yeah. Each stage has a set limit of monster points. Okay. And the total monster points of the monsters you use cannot exceed the limit. All right. I see. That means... I mean, I've played Yu-Gi-Oh! games that have a very similar premise. So it's like every duel, every different terrain, I have to pick a different set of monsters with a different MP cost. That's actually kind of clever, because I don't have to do it beforehand. It's like when I go into the, the match, that is when I make the decision. If the monster point limit of the stage is 100, then I can use 10 monsters that are 10 monster points each. Now, Joey only picked, like, four. So that means, like, if he has the same MP cost as me, each of his monsters are, like, over, like, 60 MP points. Or I can only use five monsters if they are 20 monster points each. Or I could summon one monster that has 270 points and destroy the competition. That's right. So you have to think carefully about the balance of which monsters to use. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Yugi. All right, so our MP is... Oh, okay, so... The... All right, so what number is our maximum? Is it 270? Is it 100? Is it 300? W what number maximum are we using here? <laughs> I'm thinking it's 270, right? Because that's like the bar at the top. It's 270, all right. So... What are some of the strongest monsters we got here? It looks like I can only pick a certain amount. I only have 17 cards in my possession, so I don't really have a lot of options here. But this is a water-based field, so I'm definitely gonna go with Root Water. Uh, and I gotta go with uh, Sonic Mate, I guess, because that's a strong one. Maybe I should have a Kappa. Kappa Kappa! I love Hainawa, so let's go with Hainawa. And uh, another uh, another Hainawa. And uh, maximum deployment. All right, I guess we're good. Yeah. I have no idea what I'm doing, so literally a baptism by fire. I'm just going to figure this out as I go. All right, where do I put my symbol? Can I throw it way in the back? I'm going to throw it here. All right. I lay down my symbol. All right, uh, manual or random? Let's go random, because it's quicker. All right, all right, that's not bad. Okay, all right, yeah, sure. Let's just go in. I just need to figure out how this game works. That's how I play things, I just go. All right, player turn, all right. So, it's time to start. <laughs> It's time to do. I mean, it's time to start. All right. Hey, in order to move your pieces, you need AP. Well, I have that. I see. Each piece has a set requirement of AP. And if I move it, then the AP on the screen decreases. This correct? is a lot like chess. Um, okay, sure. Whatever you say. <laughs> None of this resembles chess. <laughs> but all right. Yep. And if you don't have enough AP... Then you can't move your pieces anymore. Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist so of the Roses look more like chess than this so far. When thinking about how to move my pieces. All right. Uh-huh. But first... Uh-huh. You can't move anything if you don't summon monsters from your capsules. So you have to choose which monsters to summon. You're right. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to summon uh, this water guy for... I'm going to summon uh, Kappa. I'm going to do Kappa here. All right, so AP costs 40, or 48. Advantage against fire. 
All right, he can move and he can attack. I have no idea what that means, but let's roll. Summon. All right, I'm gonna summon Kappa Kappa. All right, now uh, I'd like to move him. Can I move him at the same turn I summon him? Capability, all right, what do we got here? Uh, this is boring, so I'm gonna skip this, and I guess I'm gonna end my turn, because I don't think I can do anything else. I can't move anything. I, it says I can move two spaces, but it's not giving me that option. So, I'm just gonna end my turn. You can't move a piece you summon, got it. All right, cool, great, let's end turn then. Yeah, sure. All right, what do we got here? Here I come, Yug. That's actually how you spell Yug. I thought it was just Y-U-G. Summon more if you can. Do you get AP back every turn? I'm imagining you do. Is that the Wandering Doomed or Skull Servant? All right, I'm assuming I get AP every turn. It's my turn. Yes, that makes sense. All right, cool, cool. Hey, right now you saw the AP increase, right? What? What? Yes, oh, yes. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, I Where guess it I saw says that. it AP on the screen, there's a number with a plus sign next to it. Yep. Yes. Yes. This number must be the amount of AP that increases on my turn. I would assume yeah. so. And if you summon a monster, it'll increase. That means either I move a summoned monster or I summon so that I can move more pieces. That's something I need to think about. Can I move and it's summon on the same turn? It's important to make turn? a decision based on the... So, can I move my Kappa and summon a monster? Well, let's find out. Okay. I can! That's so cool. All right, can I summon any more? No. AP's not... Wait, wait. I don't have enough AP. 104. She needs... Oh, 115. Summon another Hainawa. Okay. That's cool. I can do that. All right. Like Fire Emblem, yeah. Definitely getting Fire Emblem is kind of like waiting. You have to wait to kind of like build to the battle. But we'll get there. This is also the tutorial. So, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Isn't there also a um, flame skeleton or something? There's a there's a Yu-Gi-Oh card that's like a, like a skeleton wearing a robe that uses uh, a bow and arrow. So, might be able to summon everything this turn. Okay. Yeah. All right, I just summoned everything. So I don't know if that's what I'm supposed to do, is just summon everything as, as fast as I can, but that's what I did. All right. All right. I'm guessing it takes... Its ability increased. Ooh. That terrain is favorable for your piece's attributes. Ah, that's good to if know. If the terrain is favorable, then the ability increases. But if it's unfavorable, then the ability decreases, right? Yeah. You can check by looking at your piece's ability. I see. Then, I should be on the same terrain okay. as my attribute as much as... It changes depending on the situation, but it's worth remembering. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sure. Fire Reaper, that's it. Yeah, it's Fire Reaper. Makes sense. Let me guess, another Fire Reaper? He's on the Fire Reaper, me uh, Fire Reaper meta. All right. So now the water is rising. Joey's like, oh no. Oh, I think I know what's gonna happen. <laughs> He's playing with fire monsters and he's on a water field. I can see why this is a tutorial what? now. You can't be serious. This can't happen. This can't happen. Brooklyn rage. Brooklyn indignation. All right. Cool. Well. Can 
Can I move the Kappa on the water? I can't. Nice. Power up! God, this music is epic as shit. All right, I'm getting the getting the feel for this. Oh, I don't think I can move anything else. I've used up all my points. All right, getting close to attacking though. All right. And the Hinoas I have um, are not weak against water. They're weak against thunder, so it should be fine. Or they're weak against. Um, Dark, right? Yeah, they're weak against Dark, so everything should be fine with that. All right, I should be able to attack this now? Now, can I attack from this angle? I cannot move there. All right, well, how do I attack? Oh, I see. They each have ways they can attack. They have... Oh, that's what that was. So I can only attack monsters that are in that immediate vicinity around me. All right. Now that's that's going to be fun to play around. That's going to be interesting. That little diagram, that's what that was all about. So unless he moves closer to me, I can't attack him. All right. Well, then I won't move then. And this guy can only move in like an X shape. All right. That's actually really fascinating the way that that works. That is clever. And I so I should be able to do this. Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, this should work. All right, let's see what the let's see how this works here. Dimension the dice. I mean, capsule the capsule. Dive bomb. It's like a giant almond. Boom. Oh, it didn't kill it. All right, this is like Fire Emblem. Holy shit, this is like Fire Emblem. It's, and I love Fire Emblem. I, lo I love Awakening, and this is reminding me a lot of Awakening, so yeah. All right, cool. Nice. That's a cool little motif there. So this lady can move horizontal like this. Okay. And uh, the root water. I gotta get root water moving because then I can, you know, do some stuff with him. It's cool, though, that each capsule has a different way of moving. All right. All right, what do we got, Joey? Come on. Come on, Joey. I'm not gonna give up. Yeah, you even have in. levels. Yeah. All right, so he's gonna try to attack me, I guess. All right, so he's gonna kill me here. But he's in the water, shouldn't he power down? He's a fire monster. Win it quick and slick. That's my motto. Of course it is, Joey. Then let's get started, Joey. All right, let's see if this really is like Fire Emblem. Let's see what happens here. was a lot of damage, but it... Okay. Okay. So he... Your pin cushion! Oh, he's gonna attack me with... Okay. I see what he's gonna do. Okay. I might turn off the battle animations. I kind of don't want to, but I can see how it would get annoying. No! All right. You're doing better than it's I thought. It's a mix Joey. between chess. It it is like chess. It is and like it's chess. Where that came from. It's a mix between chess and I'm fire. Just getting emblem. warmed up, you. But who do I romance is the real question. You know, if it's a mix between fire emblem, I gotta romance somebody. You know. Oh, here we go. This should be fun. Uh, 
Come on with the water. Yes. All right. Romance the blue eyes white dragon. I will do this. All right, we got a lot of water monsters over here. Like, well, she's a wood monster, but we have a... Okay, he can move. He's the rook. So they're basically like chess pieces. Rook. You know, I'm sure they each have a, an individual set movement, so... She moves like a... Uh, she kind of moves like any space immediately around her, like a king. And Hainawa moves like a bishop. Kappa moves like a king. You know, so it seems like they have preset movements. He moves like a rook. Yeah. Okay, I get it. I get it. All right. Uh. So I can do this? No, I can't do this. So why can't I move over? Oh, I can only move two spaces? Oh, that's what the two means. I was wondering what that two stood for. All right. Can I really not attack him with this? All right, fine. I'll move up. Have him attack me. Oh, I can't attack. Oh, okay. I, I see. All right. All right. All right. I get it. I can attack him. All right. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Attack. All right, Kawamatsu. Let's get some Kappa. Kappa, Kappa. Kappa acrobatics. Kappa punch. Dude, Kawamatsu just walks up to people and just decks them in the jaw. Boo! And they level up, which is nice. I wouldn't expect anything less, Yug. All right. Okay. All right. I can attack this one too, yeah. Oh, damn, yes. Sonic made. I love how she has a sight that's shaped like a music note. That's such a cool idea. You've been reaped. Boom. I think we're going to win this one. I know it's just the tutorial stage, but I think we're going to win this one, guys. All right, there we go. Uh, okay, it's the bottom of the ninth. Two outs. I got to make my move now or it's over. All right, Joey, whatever you say. Your baseball analogies won't save you now, Joey. Okay. What do you got, Joey? I have never seen anyone play with a wood deck. Well, I'm making history, I guess. All right, here we go. What was the, uh, what was the first Fire Emblem game? And what console was it on? Alright. Yeah, I don't think he, he can destroy my Kappa. Fire Emblem 1. Well, yeah. What game, what console did it come out on? And what, uh, NES really is that old, man. Ow, you hurt my kappa. All right, now it's going to start moving that around. Oh, I can move that? I didn't even know I can move that. That's cool. All right. I should be able to attack that fire reaper in front of me. Uh, no. Oh, I have to move. Oh, I can't. Uh, unless I do... Oh, this. Wait, no. Hold on. I'm trying to figure this out. 
All right, I can move two spaces, but only attack one. So I don't think I can attack with Kappa this turn. That's Sonic made. What can she do? Move two, attack two. What happens if I move to a space with a character on it? Uh, I cannot do that. All right, well, that's good to know. Good to know. Uh, I don't think I could do anything else. I guess I have to start making for his uh, thing at some point, so I'm going to start doing that. Are you playing on an emulator? Yes, I am. All right, so he's going to attack me. This shouldn't kill me, though. Oh, boy. Can I skip the animations one at a time, or do I have to turn them off? Uh, I think I have to turn them off. Yeah, I probably have to turn them off. Not that they don't look dope. They look really cool. But just to kind of speed this along, probably going to have to turn them off. Ow. All right, I'm dead. Yeah. You can skip them one at a time. Well, it's not giving me the option for that. And I'm pushing every button. It's fine. We can just turn them. No, my Kappa! Sorry, Kawamatsu. Well, you're just backing yourself up into a corner, buddy, so you can keep doing that. That's fine. All right. Uh, uh, okay. Move to attack two. I mean, I'm just going to start making a break for your piece. I get a bonus from here. And... Okay. Not quite in range yet. Okay. Oh! 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 That I was looking for a button that did that. That is so good. Cool. That is so cool. All right. Great. That is cool. Okay. I can't control the pieces when they're zoomed out like this. But that is so nice that it gave me that option. That's so cool. Just kind of messing with the uh, pieces here. Oh, wait. Oh, that's cool. I can turn off. Oh, the vibration. I wonder if that would even work on my controller. Probably not. All right. Stop torturing me, you. I know you had this duel in the bag. <laughs> he knows we're gonna win. He's just like, ah, oh, come on, you. Stop it. Just end the. Just end your turn already, man. I hate it when non-gamers play games. Well, only professional gamers should play games. Damn it. I have a PS4 controller, yeah. I'm using a red one for this. If that's all the damage you can deal, then my monster will not fall. Ow. Damn it. Yeah, it gives me a toggle, but I have to mess with that. I keep accidentally clicking the X button, and it keeps taking me directly into the battle. Tekken is a gamer. I beat Final Fantasy X. Yeah, it only took me 12 years, but I did it. No. Wait. Yeah, no, 11. It took me 11 years. 11 years to beat Final Fantasy X. But I made it there eventually. Ow, dick. You're at half power, Yug. This duel isn't over. 
All right. More water! I think that root water might be our clutch here. Oh, now it's going down? Ugh. stack two your monsters. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm trying to win. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Never played this before, man. All right. Move. All right. Uh, I don't think I can attack him if I... Well, wait a second. I think if I move here, I can attack him, right? No. Oh, no. It has to be, a, it has to be forward. Ah, damn it. Oh, but if I do this, I won't be able to attack him either. Oh, wait, no. No, two, yeah, two spaces. He's three spaces ahead of me. Shit. All right. I don't know. Like, here, I guess? Oh, man. All right. Uh, I can attack him here. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's L1, R1. There it goes. Okay, got it. All right, now that'll make things go a lot easier now. That'll make things go a lot quicker. Man, you're not gonna right. let up. Not even a little bit, are you? I should be able to attack more if I have the AP to do it. That would just make, I think, everything go a little faster. Or whatever. End turn. I don't know. There was some kind of dungeon dice game. Yeah, this is the teching, never played this game, I'm learning before kind of situation. All right, well, he's going to have the disadvantage. Ow. Okay. And he should not be able to attack me. What the shit? So they can attack one ahead and two ahead? Are they different? Let me check something here. Because that one guy attacked me first, and he also... They're the same monster. Oh, I guess you can attack as long as it's within the range or lower. Okay, that's good to know. Okay. All right, destroy that thing. All right, there we go. All right, gone. Good. And then... Can't do anything else. But I should be able to, like... I guess I can't move here because it's on top of a pillar. Hmm. I'm not going to move. I'm not going to move. Alright. And this is just the tutorial. This is obviously going to get infinitely more complex as we go. Ow. It shouldn't kill me though. Now yeah, we're good. That was a lot of damage. Okay. Alright. Alright, more water. I guess it's gonna alternate going up and down. Yeah. Or down, okay. I mean, once we destroy his last piece, where we win, right? Because there's nothing else he can do. He can't summon more pieces. Every move is another. Okay, that's great, Yuki. So once I destroy this thing, I win. I can't attack him though. All right, I should be able to attack him here. Yes. Yes, sure. Oh, God, so close. See, the major difference here with Fire Emblem is that if in, in Fire Emblem, when you attack a monster, like, they attack back. You know what I mean? Unless there's, like, ranged or something. So I keep expecting, like, I attack his Fire Reaper, and then his Fire Reaper tries to attack me back, but that's not how it works. So that's, that's some getting used to that. 
And I cannot attack this guy, can I? I can't attack with this guy. He only moves like this. And I can only attack like a rook. Moves like a bishop, attacks like a rook. Now what are you gonna do? He has 69 HP left. Noise. Ow. Oh, perfect damage. Ah, that's not good. All right. I will use all my strength. Okay. I guess I lost? Because how am I supposed to attack this guy? He only has... He can only attack... Can I move him out of the way where he can't attack me? I have to, like, map it out here. Hold on. It's like, no, then he'll be able to attack me there. Okay, he shouldn't be able to attack me here. I guess. I don't know. I'm figuring this out as I go. Here I go. It's my turn. Everybody, I don't know if that's an oh my god, like... Oh my god, this is so crazy, or oh my god, Tekken, you suck! You lost. Okay. Tekken is bad at chess. That is true. I'm 100% bad at chess. Alright, I guess move to the water. Alright. I'll do that. There we go. Yay! Okay. Well, I'm dead. So now what happens? What's wrong, Yugi? You're playing pretty bad. You it's almost like something? some dude that doesn't know how to play this game played this game. <laughs> all right. Yeah, okay, you lose. All right, there we go. All right. I beat Yugi all by myself. I, I love how... I, I love how Yugi, I mean, Joey finally gets to say that. There are so many moments in the story, like that Battle City duel at the end where Yugi and Joey duel. Like, Yugi and Joey, I would have loved to see them duel in the finals. I would have loved to see Joey, if Joey beat Merrick, and then Joey and Yugi dueled in the Battle City final, that would have been the biggest twist ever. It could have totally happened. There's nothing that says that Yugi has to defeat Merrick. Joey should have beat Merrick. He had him in his fucking, like, it was ready. It was right there. Joey should have won that fight. Yugi, I won, but I'm sure. No, Joey, there's no need to diminish your achievement in any way. No, Joey, you won. Fair Thanks, and square. You. All right. Good game. Joey just had the strat. I guess he did. All right. Now let's try this again. Next time, have six monsters on your team. That would probably be a strategy. I have a better idea, though. I have a better strategy. Do the exact same thing I did. But win this time. <laughs> All right, we'll try something different here. Now that I know a little bit more about how to do this, let's, let's try this again and see if this works. What is your favorite archetype, and why is it Ojama? Well, you know, Ojama has Ojama Knight, Ojama King. It's a lot of stuff to love. All right, let's try this again. Yeah, use water monsters is, is the general vibe I'm feeling now. Although, I don't think I had anything that was weak to fire. I had a wood monster, but I only had the one. And in fact, I had two water monsters, and they were still defeated by fire monsters. So I don't know. Hey, you, I've been waiting. I think that uh, I think that chart was kind of BS, honestly. All right. All right. 
Let's try to see what we can do here. All right, I go first. All right, I'm going first. Screw it. Yeah. Oh, so I'm o oh oh no, he's still over here. Wait, I thought I go first. Oh, they're, they're like placement. Okay, he does placement first, and then I do it. Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. Oh, yeah, when you get more capsules, like, you can see how this game can get insane. All right. Let's get Psychic Kappa and Root Water. And, uh, I had how many monsters? I had I had five last time. Let's not do Sonic Maid, because she was, uh, I feel like I should just do another Root Water. Just do three Root Waters. Yeah, let's just do it. I think this is good. Let's just go with this. Water beats fire. There's a water field. I have five water monsters. You know, they said not to do that at the beginning, but he's playing with nothing but fire. I have nothing but water. By default, I feel like I should win this. Oh, I didn't want to do that, but okay. Manual placement. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, I can place them. Oh, I can... Wait. I can do that? Wait, what? I was going to say, can I place them wherever? All right. I'm guessing they have to be in a certain range of... Oh, okay. I see. You can place your piece kind of like whatever in this little zone. So you have to make the choice whether to pick it closer to your opponent or further away from your opponent. Like, do you want to play defensively or, or what? I get it. All right. Yes. All right. That's that's clever. So you're going to have to decide where to move your the main chess piece, your king, so to speak. All right. It's time to start. All right. Uh, let's just get rolling with root water then. Okay. All right. Yep. I forgot this game existed. Well, now you do. So this is going to be a long one, I can already tell. We're only an hour and ten minutes into this, and I haven't even gotten past the first one. I should probably just, I should probably waste these first few turns summoning. You will, you will fear my army of Kappas, Yugi. I mean, Joey. You also, I guess later in the game, have to decide on whether to summon your monsters really quick or summon one and just get moving or summon less like later. Maybe keep something in the back for like a, a trump card later in the duel if you need it. I can see a lot of, uh, I can see a lot of strategies here. Definitely. They didn't build Rome in a day. Actually they did, fun fact. Fun fact, they actually did in fact build Rome in a single day. All right, so he can move like that. All right. Keep these guys in the water. And... Uh, you know, I've heard of Master Duel. I haven't played it yet. Um, I would like there... Is there a legacy kind of form of Master Duel where you can only play with, like, you know, older Yu-Gi-Oh cards? Because I don't know anything about modern Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't know anything about what? your Hauke you Five Raxes or your happen. Mystic Minds. I don't know anything about any of that. But if I could play, like, old school, like, DM era, then, yeah... Some goat format. Advance, my Kappa army. Move him over. I'm going to keep 
keep these guys in the water as much as I can. Oh, wait. Okay. Uh, I'll summon this guy. Why not? Why not? Now, nah, I don't want speed duels. I want classic DM era Yu-Gi-Oh! I want Grandpa Yu-Gi-Oh! Send them to the slaughter, huh? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Win it quick and slick. Sure. Ow. All right. here I'll use all my skills until the very end of the duel well you know that's Yugi let's not write checks that we can't cash here okay let's let's just let's just calm down a bit yeah that's what I'm talking about strike all right now I wouldn't expect anything less you He's probably going to destroy me next turn. Is there anything I can do to to really? Okay, hold on. Let me let me try to let me try to decipher this here. Okay. I have no idea what landform 93% means. I have no idea what symbol 120 cent of percent means. I have no idea what map 110% means. Uh. You think something would be? Wouldn't I be strong against fire? I don't see any fire symbols. Eh, whatever. Move. I don't want to take him off water though. Well, wait. Actually, haha. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a sneak attack from the side. I'm gonna attack from the rear. Let's do this like real Romans. Yep, that's the Yugi I know. Yeah, Grandpa missed explaining the complicated mean I'm stuff. Surrender. Oh well, that's how we figure it out as we go, you know. Master Duel is nothing but troll bots and meta net decks. See, I don't, I don't like modern Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, all the standard reasons on why I don't like modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, there's too much text, too much of a focus on special summoning, spamming, and links and all that crap. Like, I played uh, with my friend Phil, and my friend Phil does play professional Yu-Gi-Oh! He plays, you know, competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, he actually ranked at a tournament at, at Locals not long ago. Um, but, you know, sitting down with Phil to play, it's like the f his first turn takes like 10 minutes while he's like, all right, I'm going to summon this and then use that and then link this and then pendulum this and then special summon this and then take that and then use that to link summon this and then take that to pendulum this and then I'll use this and this and then activate this spell card and then do this and this. And I'm just sitting there like... <laughs> and then 10 minutes later, he ends his turn and I'm like, all right, I play one card face down, play up two spells and end my turn. <laughs> like the... That's just how it goes, man. Yeah. It's not even the same game anymore. You're not even you anymore. Um. Wait, hold on. Oh, no, no, no. Hold on, let me check something. Oh man, this is get this is getting tactical. Haha. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, baby. Bam! All right, now we're getting the hang of this. All right. Uh, okay. Um, I think 
I think Yu-Gi-Oh! really just needs to take a cue from Magic in general, and I think they might be doing this, because I don't pay I, I don't pay close attention to what the competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! scene is, but I think they do need to take a cue from Magic, where I know Magic has, like, legacy and then, like, different, like, different classes of tournaments based off of an era of card, you know? So, like, this is only for cards of a certain ilk that were made, like, 20 years ago, or in Magic's case, like, 30 years ago. And then this is this, and this is this, and then, you know, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! needs to do something like that. Like, DM era Yu-Gi-Oh! only, 2002 to 2005. Those are the only cards you can use. And then GX era Yu-Gi-Oh! And then, you know, whatever. It doesn't have to go by the anime. It could be, like, 2002 to 2005, and then 2005 to 2010, and then 2010 to 2015, and then anything 2016 on is, like, modern. You know, like, that kind of shit, right? Yeah, that'd be okay. Those are called formats! Like I said, I am not a competitive card game player. Formats! Yeah, there you go. That's a word. Alright. I'm gonna keep that last root water back there as sort of like a defender for my piece in case things really go awry here. Yeah. Like I said, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! is having its 25th anniversary here. And um, coming up here in July, they're going to be re-releasing, like, the first five booster box uh, sets. Like, re-releasing them in new editions. And I'm going to buy a lot of those. I want to get a lot of those booster boxes and kind of, like, do some openings. Like, that should be a lot of fun. Maze of Memories is coming out in a um, couple days. Which I think on the 10th that's coming out. That should be fun. All right. I should be able to kill this thing, shouldn't I? Yeah! Root water destruction. All right, now, now we're getting the hang of this a little bit here. Do your worst. Oh, I can attack, actually. Yeah. I think I just won. I think I just won, then. This will finish you. Yes. All right. See, that made it... Okay, that was a lot quicker without the animations end that I had a kind of halfway... Not even halfway. I had an eighth of a way of knowing what the hell ah, I was doing. It's all over. So there it is. There it is. Victory player! Nice. Victory! I lost, Yugi. But Joey, you fought valiantly. Which means you still lost. <laughs> yeah, I guess I did. Maybe that's why yeah, I, I guess I did fight I pretty damn cool, I suppose. Now, you don't you be losing any other duels, all right? I will not lose a single match after this one, Joey. I won't let you down. All right. Okay. There we go. That took about an hour and 20 minutes, but we beat our first opponent. Nice. Okay, cool. We got stuff. And we got cards. Did we get anything? Okay, XP. No level ups. Uh, all right, do we get Fire Reaper? I guess we get two of anything. All right, so, oh man, I have to choose. Actually, I don't want that Fire Reaper. I want this Fire Reaper. Yeah, no, Fire Reaper number three. That was hey, my favorite. Hey, Yugi, what's wrong, Joey? There's something I forgot to tell you about this tournament. What do you think? There are five opponents in each area. Oh my God. Okay. And if you don't beat them all, you can't move on. All right. That means. Seems like a pretty obvious. It seems like a thing that should be in the tournament rule book. Honestly, where is this tournament even taking place? Are we on Skypea right now? I just defeated you, Joey, so I have to defeat four more opponents. Right. And if you clear four areas, a whole new path opens up. So we got 19 more duels, and then probably a fifth area as a final duel. We got 24 more duels to probably do. We're going to be here a while, guys. We're going to be here a fucking while. A new path? What's that? <laughs> like I know. Who organized this tournament? Well, just keep winning. 
and maybe it'll all make sense later. So keep at it, buddy. All Thanks, right, Joey. That's exactly what I'll do. All yeah, right. Beat their butts. Beat See their later. butts. Uh, all, all right, Joey. Okay, calm down. Uh, no, beat their butts in, you. Do A it. New path. Take their butts and just smack them. I'm like, all, all right, Joey. Jeez. Calm down. I don't down. know what the new path is. Yugi, take my lucky paddle and beat their butts. I'm like, all right. But we're shit. traveling on our own road, right? No matter who we face on this road, we must win. And we'll do it together. Yeah! All right. I guess who's next? Probably probably Yugi's friends are going to be the first match. Now, I think we could go through this whole game without saving. I don't think we need to save. Probably Tristan will be next, and then Taya. Taya will probably be the final boss. It all comes back to Taya. Rustage is here! Woo! Rustage! All right, Rustage. I'm playing... It's like fucking Yu-Gi-Oh! Chess mixed with Fire Emblem. So, like, that's a thing. Oh, I have to... Wait, what? I already saved. Yeah. Gotcha. All right, cool. All right, who's next? I used to play this as a kid. All right, well, I'm playing it now for the first time, and I have no idea what I'm doing. But I beat Joey on my first try, because I'm just that awesome. Guys, go along with it. I'm trying to be cool in front of Rustage here. Wink, wink. Oh, yeah, Tristan, the wood user. All right, Condemned Warehouse. Forgotten Capital, Condemned Warehouse. If, if they actually came up with, like, 25 different unique arenas, that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. All right. I guess we just go in. I guess we don't do deck building in between. We just dive right in and see what we got. Oh, now we're doing Tristan. All right. Honda. Is that a Honda? No, I think it's a, uh, I think it's a Yamaha. They are all unique. That's cool. Yugi, meet me at the old abandoned warehouse. Yugi. Oh, God. I'm Lord Orochi, Yugi. Oh, God, this is like a horror movie. What are those things? What is that? Oh, God! Uh, it's me, the man, the legend, Tristan Taylor. This is the most epic Tristan has ever been, period. Why is he wearing, like, a hairnet? It looks like he's wearing a hairnet. Yugi, I may not be as experienced as you when it comes to games, but if you take me lightly, I'm gonna make you pay. Jesus, Tristan! I know. That's why I'm going I, to I use think, all my skills I, to defeat you. I think Tristan is a serial killer in this version. He hangs out in an old creepy abandoned warehouse and greets people like that. <laughs> no matter who my opponent is, I will use all my strength to defeat you. To victory! That is my proof as a true duelist. Ooh. Oh, um, maybe you don't need to use all your skills. No, we're bringing it. Y you know, maybe just some, please. 70%. All right, here we go. Uh, this is a, what is it, field? Poison and electric. Poison's not even a, poison and electric weren't even options. All right. Oh, okay, I still go first. All right, cool. Uh, I'm gonna go first. All right. Okay. Okay. All right, so he's got a lot of wood. He's got wood and electric. That's what he's got. So we want fire and we want earth, which we, we actually do. We have fire monsters we got from Joey and we got earth monsters. Select the monsters for the sortie. I love sortie. It's such a fun word. And these are 300s. So this is a little higher. Okay. So let's go with earth. And fire. And we can pick a few extra. So let's just go with uh, Sonic Maid because she's pretty powerful. And uh, let's go with that. Let's roll with that. All right. Now where is Tristan at in relative location to this? There he is. Okay, he's over there. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm going to do it here. I'm going to place it right here. 
And I'll just do random placement. That's fine. I, I don't really... Giggity, giggity. Giggity goo. Yes. Okay. All right. Oh, this is a creepy OST, but I love it. It's time to start. I feel like I am in a horror movie right now. Hold on, let me adjust my lighting a little bit for this. There we go. There we go. Actually, you know what? Ho oh, ho ho, there it is. All right. All right. Why not, why not? Gulp. All right. Now. Earth is strong against thunder. Thunder is strong against light. Okay, so he's strong against light monsters. And he's strong against wind. And I don't have any wind or light, so that should be okay. But I do have his disadvantages. Okay. All right, then. Now, this is reminding me of, like, Resident Evil. Which, which, by the way, now that my internet works fine, I think I could go back and finish okay. my Resident Evil. Let's I gotta look. think, like, two moves ahead. I, I which guess. Which I'm not exactly good at. <laughs> oh, poor Tristan. He's trying. Oh, look at him. He's got some mobs. All right, looks like he has... Oh, there's the, uh... There's the le electric boy kind of card that's like the Pikachu. Um... Which is interesting, because in the anime, he actually used that card as, like, his staple. I'll tear down your defenses. I think I would have liked this game as a kid. I probably saw this game as a kid, and I was like, it's capsule monsters, it's not real Yu-Gi-Oh!, and I probably didn't want to play it. Tristan isn't playing around anymore, Yugi. Tristan's got, like, a bloody knife behind his, uh, his coat. He's ready to use it. He has a chainsaw. Tristan with a chainsaw, guys. All right, who wins? Tristan with a chainsaw or, uh, let's see. Kobeni with a toothpick. How about that? I'm still putting money on Kobeni on that one. God, why is the music so good? The music has no right to be this creepy and epic. All right, I'm just going to summon everybody here. Summon the whole crew. All the Nakama. And I'm moving. I don't think I can move anybody else. Yeah. Kobeni. Kobeni wins. Yeah. 600 people watching right now. Okay. Bandit Keith with a gun hand, yeah. Man, I mentioned this in the um, Duelist of the Roses, I think, Let's Play. Or maybe, no, it was the Forbidden Memories. But the way Keith dies in the manga is so brutal. Like, the way Pegasus kills him there is, is pretty dark. All right, I think I like zooming out to that degree here. Okay. Where's all his... Okay, he's moving this way with the electric monsters. Now, the earth monsters are strong against those. So, I'm going to keep my Hainawa guys moving this way. Can I get over there to him? Oh, see, like, I don't think I can move on these green spaces. I think these are, like, blocked out. So, I could, in theory, get over there, but it would take some time. Well, you know, I'm not in a huge hurry here. So these are the wood. She's she's kind of like in the middle. She really doesn't have an advantage or a disadvantage on anybody here. Get some defense going over here. Uh, 
the one piece is a go with the hidden woods. Oh, yeah. Will you do more Chainsaw Man videos? Ah, uh, maybe. Probably not, though. I kind of want a Tristan with a Chainsaw Man shirt now. I love Chainsaw Man. Tristan would totally be one of the fanboys of Chainsaw Man, at least in the most recent arc. Oh, I got shocked. Okay. Spore damage. All pieces, except for wood pieces, receive damage. All right, that's good to know. I take damage there. I can't let that happen again. All right, so... All right! Everything went according to plan! Shut up, Tristan. You didn't plan shit. Shut up! All right, well, I do have a wood monster, so that is handy, because I did do the wood deck. Got to lead with the wood deck. Wood deck supremacy. All right, uh... Well, let's move away from that. And she is a wood Sonic maid, so I can move through this crap. All right. Get my Hinoas in position. Actually, let me, uh... Yeah, that's fine. Now, I'm assuming I'm going to get electrocuted, but I'm on Earth, so I'm assuming I might be immune to electrocution. So, one of those things we're just going to have to find out as we go. Oh, used up all my app. Because to move, I need 55, and I only got 50. Can you drive 55? I can't believe you fell for Tristan's plan. That was not Tristan's plan. Tristan does not have any plans. Tristan can barely plan what cereal he's going to eat in the morning, okay? Like, come on now. Let's not, let's not give him too much credit here, ladies and gentlemen. Tristan is Sosuke Eisen. How do I keep getting attacked? I'm like, I'm like three spaces away from the damn spore thing. All right, whatever. Okay, here we go. No, I'm going to attack. All right. All right, I'm not going to be able to kill it. This should do a lot of damage. So, yeah, this is basically the Yu-Gi-Oh! version of uh, Pikachu. Kaminari Kozo, which is like Thunder Boy or Thunder Kid, Lightning Bolt Kid, something like that. Kaminari! Uh-oh, I'm in big trouble. Big, big trouble. Should be able to finish this thing off. Yes. Yeah. Ah! Oh, time out! Time out! No, no, no! There's no time out here, Tristan. We're not playing at the kiddie pool anymore. You know what I mean? Ah! With that guy gone, things only look downhill for me. Damn straight. You didn't outsmart me, Tristan. I will not live with Tristan Taylor. Now I have to win. Now I have to win. Well, at least Sonic May can move through all this bullcrap. How could she attack? Uh, she can only attack two spaces. Okay, that's her range. Hold on a second here. I should be able to attack that next turn. Yeah. Okay. Not Thunder, kid! That Spore's reach is insane. Come on, Tristan! Use the Noodle! I summon Noodle! The danger noodle, which is a snake. A snake is a danger noodle, but I love snakes. Snakes are cool. Damn it, teching, I was going to bed. Well, this will be on the VOD so you can watch it tomorrow. Honestly, I'd prefer to watch this on the VOD. You can skip over all the moments where I don't uh, really do much. All right, those spores don't really do a lot of damage, but they're really annoying. What are the range on those things? Does it actually say what the range of those spores are? A second. Victory, yeah, I know, Yugi. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We thought that last time, and look what happened. Doesn't actually say. Or is it just this thing? Weird. Okay, um, I can attack this. Attack! Scythe Blade of Fury! Oh, okay, that's, you know, losing a lot of points there. I think we'll be all right. I think we should be able to oh, beat Tristan. Come on, take it easy! No way, Tristan. Not after what you did. All right. 
Uh... Okay. No, I didn't want to move there. I didn't want to move there, but okay, that's fine. Okay. Man, I really can't move over this terrain. Okay. He can, though. There it goes. Okay. I won't be able to attack this guy, though. I think we'll probably just be able to finish him off by uh, killing all of his capsules. By the way, if you keep, if you're curious why this keeps happening, I'm conditioned to press start for like ending my turn, and it, the start button does this. So it's actually X, and that's how I end my turn. The noodle dance. 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 <laughs> That's the noodle dance, ladies and gentlemen. Something else that's uh, different from Fire Emblem, uh, at least Awakening and, and Birthright and everything that I've played in three houses, is uh, so the number that appears when you're fighting, like that number... All pieces except for Thunder Pieces receive damage. So even th even Earth Pieces receive damage. All right, well, that's good to know. Ah, at least we're fighting this out early. So whenever I fight a monster, like I'll show you here in a second. Yeah, I, I think Tristan has definitely killed somebody here. Like this is definitely the murder. Why does he know the murder factory? All right, so like when I go to attack, you know how it says uh, right here, it says 172, 23. That's the amount of damage that I'm going to deal? Wait, or is that the damage he'll have left after? I don't know. Oh, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to deal. Well, I deal 23 because that's all he had left, but it's not his total that'll be at the end, which will be zero. Like, if this was Fire Emblem, that would like, be a big zero on there, like, destroyed. Which part of Take It Easy do you not understand? Tristan, we're, we're, we're well past that, Jerry! <laughs> Oh, uh, the Mr. Me Six. Well, what's your favorite episode of Rick and Morty? That the Mr. Me Six was a good one. All right, I gotta get these guys off that electric table. Well, this is all this is thunder, so it's immune. Is there any way I can attack? No, there isn't. I might be able to attack with this one though. Move. No, I won't be able to attack with that. Uh, maybe I should just get that one Hainawa off the Thunder area. Let him come to me kind of situation. I think I'm going to still take damage here, but whatever. Another fire. That fire, fire, fire Reaper is just kind of hanging out here chilling. Uh, Tristan just impales people with his hair. Yeah, RIP Justin Roiland, yeah. Part of me feels like they, could, they should just kind of end the series now, but I can see what they're going to do. I mean, they're just going to make it like... And you know what? I've actually... Okay, I shouldn't say that because you know what? Like, I've seen some really good... Like, they have to... They'll be able, to, I think, to find somebody that has the voice. Like, I don't think that's going to be hard. Even if they have to do separate voice actors for Morty and Rick, I, I, I don't think they won't be able to find somebody that approximates it because, I mean, there's people that can do really good impressions of cartoon characters, you know? And I, I'm sure they could find somebody there. Um... They are legally locked into 70 episodes. Well, then, this is what it is. Yeah. Uh, okay, what do I have left? I have the Steel Scorpion and I have this thing I have to kill. All right. Oh, I can move all the way over here, good. Like he's not going to serve any purpose. Okay. Now, I'm thinking either he comes to me or I get old. I I'm probably not going to win through this path over here. I'm probably going to win through this path here. Because I actually have kind of a... I'm getting kind of a straight path toward his... Uh, what are these things called? Like uh, leader pieces or whatever? Symbols? 
so get in there. I'm half expecting zombies to like come out of the ground here. Dueling zombies! I love Bones' this whole thing. Ghost Kozuka. I loved his whole thing and when I like I said, my favorite um my favorite episode of the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime is when Bakora dueled Bones in the graveyard in Battle City. That's like my favorite duel of like Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. I just call them crystals, yeah. Do your best Rick and Morty video. Yeah, see, in that case, I feel like there's so many other really good people that are making Rick and Morty content. Like, I don't need to, like... I, I feel like anything I would make would just be so, so inferior compared to what other people are doing, you know? I gotta start getting out of the score range. He's moving his... See, he's not doing anything with his scorpion. He's not advancing with that. Is there any way I can safely... I mean, I'll take some damage, but for the sake of just moving this along, I'll do it. Alright. I like the duels where Kaiba cheats, so all of them... Dude, everybody in Yu-Gi-Oh! cheats. Like, if you look at the idea of cheating as somebody else helping you, Yu-Gi cheats every single time. Yu-Gi cheats every single duel. Well, I guess that not every single duel, because there are some duels where he has to duel by himself legitimately. But I love the ways that, um, you know, it's just treated like, oh, just, you know, this is totally fair. I'm like, no, it's not. You're getting constant help. Deadly zombie birth. All right. All right, all right. Now, okay. So. Gotta keep moving. All right, here we go. Oh, we're getting there. We're over the boxes. We're over the boxes. We're coming for you. game was so dope when I was in middle school. Uh, when did this game come out in North America? Because I know the English and the Japanese releases are always, the North American Japanese releases are always different. Alright, he's probably going to destroy Hainawa. Oh no, he's attacking Fire Reaper, actually. Okay. He should be able to, ooh, that's a lot of damage. That's that a lot was a it's a lot of da 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 damage! Alright, he's going to start moving toward me, but whatever. Ow. Ow. Okay. Ow. <laughs> Ow. Alright, here we go. You are allowed to legally like literally Here I go. Ishizu had a Millennium item, her Millennium necklace that allows her to see the future. And they actually joke about that in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridge series where during Kaiba and Ishizu's duel, there's a moment in the duel where Ishizu's like my Millennium Necklace allows me to see the future, and Kaiba's just like, you're cheating then. He's like, well, yes. And so he's like, okay, well, I disqualify you, because you're clearly cheating. <laughs> you know, that was that was funny shit. Okay, here we go. Attack! Yeah! That's how it's done. Yep. Ah, come. No more, Tristan. Weakness shall not be tolerated, Tristan. 2004. So yeah, I was, um, I, that was my first year in middle school. I was in sixth grade when I was in middle school. Oh God, that takes me back. Oh God, sixth grade. Oh, do you know what my nickname was in sixth grade? This was the weird, this was a weird, I had a lot of really, okay, I had a lot of nicknames throughout school. Some of them were, okay, my nickname in high school was pretty cool, actually. It was Croft Dog. Um, you know, a, a kid in my grade just named me, just called me Croft Dog, which is not bad, because my last name is Crawford. So that's not too bad. So I'm just Croft Dog. I'm like, all right, all right, fine. Because, like, you could go Crawfish, you could go Crawdad. Like, there's a lot of shittier names for that. So Croft Dog was my name. And I'm like, all right. But there was, um, it wasn't like a lot of people. There were only, like, like, there was basically this kid named Randy 
and then his one other friend that would call me this one name in sixth grade. I was just, I was hanging out in like the lunch line one day and Randy, who like, I never hung out with him. He was actually kind of a bully. He was kind of a dick. Um, but one day in the lunch line, him and his friend were there and they called me, uh, it's like, hey, what are you doing, rich boy? Rich boy? Like, they're calling me rich boy. And I'm like, I'm not rich. And I have no idea why they called me that. Because at this point, I'm, I'm like 11. I'm not dressed like a rich kid. I'm literally wearing the, sh the clothes that my mom bought from Walmart and Goodwill. Like, that's literally, like, my mom was one of the most frugal people, she still is, to this day. Like, when it came to school shopping, Bye we went head. to Walmart, and dual that's quickly. what I got. I did not get, we, like, everybody else is going to, like, Air Apostle, Pacific, you know, American Eagle. I get Walmart and Goodwill, and that's it. And, like, I'm wearing, like, just, like, whatever, like, striped Walmart shirts or whatever. And he's like, hey, rich boy. And I and they called me that for a while, and I never understood why. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, do I just win? Oh, I guess I have to deal damage to the piece. All right. But one more of those, and I should win. Oh. Should this be like a checkmate at this point? Killed still scorpion, so now I gotta start getting off these pieces here. Yep. Oh, this is gonna affect me here too. And this I think this was pretty much designed to not go this way. If you went this way as a kid, congratulations, you are officially a beast. Cause like I don't think you're meant to go through the electric field. Unless you picked a thunder monster, obviously. Okay. I think I won. Because it's going to move. Haha, yeah. <laughs> rich boy. Yeah, Randy was... Um, yeah. I remember one time in uh, eighth grade, uh, we had the same English class together. And, uh, oh no, I lost my fire reaper. I think we got this, though, in this turn. Um, so we were in eighth grade, we were in English class together, and he sat behind me. And this one day we were in English class, and uh, he sat behind me, and uh, he just kind of told me, he's like, hey, Matt, like, like, look around you. So I turn around. This was before class started. So this was before, like, the teacher was in the class. Hold on, let me kill Tristan here, and I'll finish this story. I think this is going to be it. I don't think it's not. That's, like, about two hours into it. This will finish you. This will finish you, Tristan. BAM! Alright, there it is. So that's the other way to win, I guess, is by attacking the, the symbol, the crystal. Crystal. Of course! Aim for my symbol? Well, because you're asked for it, buddy. Da 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 da! I knew I, I didn't knew stand, I didn't a, stand chance. a chance against an expert like you, but it was a lot of fun. Dude, hearing their voices in the game is so cool. Keep it up, Yugi. I'm counting on you to win it all. It's like I'm watching an episode of the anime that was like I never saw as a kid. Thank you, Tristan. All right. So, do we get Steel Scorpion? I guess we do. Oh, I get to level up. Nice. Uh, I get to level up. Cool. Level up. Tristan's reign of terror has ended. His body count was in the triple digits. He killed the entire town, but we stopped him. Okay. I guess we get a level up for Sonic Maid. All right, we get Petite Moth. We get two, so I'm going to take Skill Scorpion and Kaminari Kozo. That's nice. Yeah, you get more XP by destroying the crystal. All right. All right, then. Could do that. Oh, well, wow. eight megabytes of data. I don't know if my computer will have enough to store that. All right. No, just go back. All right, there we go. All right, I'm going to save actually through the system here. I'm going to save state it. All right, there we go. 
Um, all right, I think that's probably good enough for tonight. That's about two hours, and I'm learning. I learned how to play the game, and that was a lot of tutorial stuff, so I think that's probably a good place to end it. What's next? Oh, shit, we're dueling Duke. He's Duke Devlin. He's bringing sexy back on the voltage cage. So he's a dark type, but he's probably going to have electrics or thunder, I'm assuming. Or maybe the, the area is going to be thunder. Petite Moth will evolve into Great Moth. Oh, is that what happens? Like, are they literally like Pokemon? Like, if they get up to a certain level, then Petite Moth evolves into Larva Moth, evolves into Cocoon, evolves into Great Moth, evolves into perfectly Poogum, perfectly Ultimate. Is that literally what happens? Because that's great. How is your ant problem? Uh, I think I took care of them all. Thanks to everybody for your suggestions. People were like, oh, put your hard drive in the freezer. That'll kill all the ants or get this special spray. I, I literally just shook out the hard drive and just left it out on the table. And then the ants would crawl out of it. Then I'd pick it up and kill the ants and set it back down. And they would come. And I just kept doing that until they were all gone. It took a while, but I got rid of them. Yeah, monsters can evolve in the game. Yes, that's so cool. Nice. Well, anyway, um, yeah. All right, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll tell the story really quick, and then I guess I'll just end it out. Okay, so in eighth grade, I sat behind, I sat in front of a guy named Randy, and, uh, you know, he was a little bit of a bully. You know, he, he wasn't the nicest guy to me. And uh, one day in English class before the class started, before uh, the teacher showed up, uh, he's behind me and he's like, hey, Matt, turn around. And I was like, OK, because I'm a dumbass. And I was like, oh, what? And so I turn around. Randy, uh, he kind of grabs my face like this and he pulls out an eyeshadow pencil. Like, you know, like girls have like makeup, like an eyeshadow pencil. Right. He takes this eyeshadow pencil and he like stabs me in the face. He doesn't like stab me, but he presses down on my face and draws eyeshadow like all over my face like this. Like this is what he does. OK. And uh, he presses down hard enough that he actually breaks the skin. I wasn't bleeding or anything, but, like, he, he tore the skin. It was like it was red, okay? So after he does that, the teacher walks in, and the class is starting. And, you know, like, looking back on it now, I'm like, why didn't I just immediately go over to the teacher and just say, hey, Randy just stabbed me in the face with a pencil and show him this? And I think the reason I didn't do that was because I, that would mean I would have to get in front of the whole class and, like, show him my face. And uh, I didn't want to do that because I knew that would get me made fun of even more. And I'd have to go the whole class with it. Or I'd have to, because like, here's the thing. Eyeshadow is waterproof. You can't just wash it off, okay? So, um, <laughs> geez, that sucks. Yeah. Anyway, so um, I didn't do that. I didn't actually uh, tell the teacher. I just went the entire class like this. So I just took my shirt and I did this and I went the entire class like this. And you know what? Teacher didn't say a damn word, mostly because I think because he was my homeroom teacher, <laughs> Mr. Ziak. And um, he, I think, was so used to me being a weirdo because I was a weirdo. I would I would like jump around and dance around and it was a little bit of a class clown. I don't know if people were laughing with me or at me, probably mostly at me, but whatever. Got to do what you got to do. So I remember one time I was doing this like little dance routine in class. And then he walks in at the beginning of the day and he looks at me. And I remember everyone's like laughing and he walks in. Mr. Ziak was a hard teacher. He was he was like a stone face kind of dude. He was the kind of dude you don't want to get yelled at by. Anyway, he walks in and then I'm doing something stupid. And then he walks in and I'm like, I, I, I like slink back down into my chair. And I remember Mr. Ziak looks right at me and he's like, how come every time I walk in this room, you're acting like an idiot? I remember he said that to my face, and I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's like, honestly, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. So, uh, anyway, so I, I, you know, Mr. Ziak, if, but, you know, Mr. Ziak was a nice guy. He genuinely was. Like, if I would have gotten in front of him and showed him my face and said, Randy stabbed me in the face with this, oh, dear Lord, Mr. Ziak would have just fucking laid into Randy. He would have just, like, you know, go to the office. Like, he's the kind of teacher that would have really yelled at him. 
Um, but I didn't, I didn't say anything. I didn't say shit. So I, I go to the whole class like this. And I remember Mr. Ziak, he's like walking in front of the class and there's only like 15 kids in the class. There's not that many of us. So he's looking at us and he sees me with my shirt up like this. And he probably just thought to himself, like, you know what? I'm not even going to ask. I don't even know. Matt's doing another weird thing. Pretty normal, honestly. So uh, we go to the whole class. Thankfully, this was the last period of the day. So after this, we went home. And uh, I went into the bathroom right after this class to try to wash it off. But it's eyeshadow. It's waterproof. You can't just wash it off with water. And even soap's not really that great at getting off. And this is just, like, shitty middle school, like, soap. And so, anyway, I, I got on the bus, and I rode the bus home all the way home with my shirt up. I got home, had to use my mom's, like, makeup remover cloth, because I actually did know how to remove it, because my mom, you know, used that, you know, like, baby oil or whatever to get her makeup off every night. So I, I went home, I used that. My face had these, like, big red line, like, red marks of just, like, because, you know, he, you know, broke skin. So just these red marks running down my face. Um, and uh, they, they were on my face, so I couldn't even, like, put a bandage over them, because it was, like, face. So I remember I just took, like, um, like Neosporin, and I just kind of put, like, ointment on the mark. And thankfully, this was also a Friday, so I didn't have school on the next days. Like, Saturday, Sunday, I didn't have school. So um, I didn't have to worry about, like, going to school the next day and people making fun of it. So by Monday, it was mostly healed. Like, the swelling had gone down, and it wasn't as red. So by, by Monday, it was pretty much fine. But, like, um, yeah, that was Randy. And I don't, I don't hold, like, animosity against him or anything. Not really. I mean, this happened back when we were, like, fucking 12 years old or whatever. But, like, yeah, that wasn't fun. Um, oh, God. I, I, that made me think of – I did a lot of stupid things in middle school <laughs> that I'm thinking about. Okay, that wasn't, that wasn't on me. That was on Randy. That was, like, my one – I should have told the teacher. I should have said, you know, I, I should have said, screw it. I don't care if the kids make fun of me. I should have just went up and told the teacher, and Mr. Ziak would have – I mean, like, Randy would have gotten... But then again, all that would have accomplished was Randy would have gotten detention. He would have been more pissed off at me, and he probably would have, like, bullied me even more. And I don't remember him bullying me really at all after this. I don't remember him really saying anything. I don't remember him ever even saying anything to me when we got into high school. You know, um, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe if I would have ratted on him, maybe it would have been different. But maybe, I don't know. So, um, yeah. No, I don't... No, guys, I don't hold grudges. I don't hold grudges. Like, there... I. I don't like, you know, this kid beat me up in fifth grade. So, you know, no, I don't. It's like your your dumbass kids or dumbass teenagers will do dumbass teenager stuff. But I do have another story for you that involves middle school here. Uh, let me go full screen on this one. Yeah, there we go. We'll do we'll do story time at the end of these. Um, hold on, let me save one more time just to make sure I have my save slot ready to go. Uh, and let me actually, I could just close this out actually. Exit, yes. All right, we'll play that again tomorrow. So come on back tomorrow for more. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what tomorrow. I don't know if we'll play it tomorrow. Tomorrow. Ooh, cool. Check that out. Woo, woo, red. Um, yeah. Um. <laughs> so another story though. Um. Has anybody ever heard of the ABC game? So there's a lot of these stupid games that you play when you're, like, in elementary school or, like, you know, middle school. It's like, hey, have you heard of this game or whatever? Like the slapping game? How do you play? <laughs> you get slapped. Like, Whoa. <laughs> you know, it's that kind of stupid shit. And I should, um, I should probably preface this. ABC game, maybe. Yeah, it's the ABC game. Yeah, some people might know what it is. Um... My phone is on 1% and I'm spending it on this. No regrets. So, um, let me move the chat over here. So, the ABC game, and I should preface this by saying that do not do this at home. This was a stupid game. This was a stupid thing. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, my mom watched a lot of, like, nightly news, Dateline kind of stuff. And so whenever there was a story about, like, you know, kids in America are playing the choking game. I remember the choking game. The choking game, none of none of my friends ever did the choking game. We weren't stupid enough to do the choking game. Um, but I remember it was everywhere. I remember they even sent, like, flyers home. And it, the choking game is pretty self-explanatory. It's where kids choke each other, and it's like you're cutting off circulation so you, like, see shit, like hallucinations and crap. So I remember the school even sent home, like, a flyer that was, like, alerting parents of, like, hey, 
we're not aware of this happening at our school, but in other schools, this choking game thing is happening. So pay attention to what your kids are doing or saying. And if you hear them talking about this, please like tell them immediately, don't do this because you can die and you could get brain damage. So the choking game was probably the one that was like, I remember this was on nightly news. Like, so my mom heard about this and she's just like, oh my God, I better not catch you playing the choking game. And I'm just sitting there like, mom, I'm not going to play the fucking choking game. Like what, what, how stupid do you think I am? Stupid enough to play the ABC game, as you're going to learn in a second here. So, the ABC game was not as dangerous as the choking game. You could not die from playing the, ch the, the ABC game. But it still could lead to injury and uh, not, not fun. And it was a really stupid thing to do. So, the ABC game was this. You need two people to play it. All right? And once again, don't play this. I'm just... I don't think anybody, I don't know, I don't know, there's probably some new stupid games that kids these days play in, in like, middle school or whatever, but back in my day, this is what it was, all right, you, so you need two people to play it, and uh, the first person kind of grabs your hand, like this, and uh, they hold it in place. Sometimes you can even have multiple people kind of hold your arm down like this, you know, like that, and just kind of keep, you can play your hand, you lay your hand flat on a table or a desk and hold it down, or maybe someone will just hold it like this, and then... So you're the one playing the game, and the other person is the one kind of administering the game. They're not really playing it because it's only really on you. So it's like two people to really do it. Okay. So your hand is this. They take their fingernail, and they lay it flat on the back of your palm, or the back of your hand, and they just kind of do this. Just kind of moves back and forth like this. Pretty slow, pretty, pretty steady at first. It doesn't really hurt. It doesn't really feel like anything. It just feels like somebody's like moving their fingernail up and down your skin. That's all it is. And uh, the reason it's called the ABC game is because you, as you're playing it, has to go through the entire alphabet. And you have to say a word for every letter. So they will say the letter. They'll say A. And then you have to say a word that starts with the letter A. So, like, they'll say A. Be like apple. B, banana. C, uh, capybara. D, uh, 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 Dorian, <laughs> Darian fruit. I don't ever heard of that. I'm like, okay, uh, D, 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 um, uh, dirt. Okay, E, uh, electricity. You know, and then just keep doing that. And as the game progresses, the person administering it is progressively scratching you faster and faster. See, it's one of those games where the person administering it has all the power, and they can ba basically make up the rules as you go. And so um, the goal of the game is to make it all the way to letter Z, all the way to the end of the alphabet. And it's sort of like a test of like, you know, hey, can you play the ABC, B ABC game? Bet you can't. Bet you can't get through the whole alphabet. And uh, you're like, oh, screw you. I could beat it. And that was basically because I was like 13 at the time. This was when I was a little older. I was in eighth grade. So I was probably around 13, maybe uh, 2006. So, yeah, I was 13. Uh, it was actually the beginning of two. It was the beginning of eighth grade because I remember the county fair was going on at the same time. And I'll let you know. So it was like September of 06. So, you know, they're, they're sitting there playing. And the guy that played with me was a guy named TJ. And uh, TJ was just like, hey, can you, you, you play ABC game, Matt? I bet you can't win. I'm just like, screw you. I can win. I could get it to the end. He explained the game to me. And I'm like, that's easy. I could go through the whole alphabet. And he's like, okay. So he grabbed my hand and he started doing that. And, of course, he doesn't tell you at the beginning, like, as the game progresses, he's going to scratch your, fit, your, your, you know, your hand more. And uh, something else I think he would do is uh, he would wait longer because he has he's the one that says I can't say a word until he says the letter. So he'll be like E, I'll be like electricity, F, uh, fruit, G. I'm like, oh come on, TJ, like that. So you could do that shit. So I think I made it to J. I think I made it to letter J or whatever. But uh, after that, I looked down. I like kind of pulled my hand away because it was really hurting at this point. It was really starting to hurt. I looked down at my hand. There were ribbons, ribbons of skin that were peeling all around this one section here, right? Actually, you know, hold on a second. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to draw on them. But, like, this whole section right here just completely peeled away, beet red, tomato red, uh, starting to bleed a little bit. And uh, I realized this was a really stupid idea. And so I didn't beat the game. So, of course, all the kids were like, whatever, you couldn't even make it past J. <laughs> you know, Adam over there, he made it to the letter L. You couldn't even make it past J. And so it was like, whatever, everybody laughs, whatever. And uh, I'm, like, looking down at my hand, and I'm like, fuck. You know, so I get home that day, and I couldn't hide that from my mom. My mom noticed it almost immediately. Oh, my God, my mom, 
my mom laid into me on that one, as she should have. Like, I, that was a stupid, stupid call on my part. That was a stupid, dumbass teenager move that I made. And uh, really, because here's also another thing. My mom, like, sees my hand, and she's like, what happened to you? And I explained the whole story. And my mom looked at me like, what is the matter with you? You let somebody scratch your skin off with their dirty fingernails. To add insult to injury, TJ was one of the kids that actually started chewing tobacco at the same time. Because there was a bunch of kids that started chewing snuff in, like, late middle school. And they would sneak off into the bathroom during class, and they would, like, put a wad of snuff in. And, they, like, it was the cool thing to do. I grew up in the fucking country. I grew up in Appalachia. Like, what do you want? All right, so anyway, yeah. So TJ smoke tobacco, I would chew tobacco. So of course, when you go to play tobacco, you open up the tobacco canister and you reach in there and you dig in with your fingernails and your fingernails get like tobacco under your nails. So he's not only scratching my skin with his dirty fingernails that he did not wash prior. It's they're also filled with chewing tobacco, which has like ground up glass and nicotine and shit in it. You know what I mean? So that's not cool. So anyway, my mom grabs my hand and she's like, you're, you're, I can't believe you would do that. And she's like, that is going to get infected. She like grabs my hand and like pours, like, I remember she poured like a thing of peroxide on it and like the whole wound just like, just like fizzled. And she's like, oh God. And she's like, rinse and repeat, rinse, de like disinfect. Like we went through like five cycles and it's just like, oh God, it was disgusting. And uh, after that was over, we put like a big bandage on it. And she's like, never do that again. Never do that again. And I'm like, yeah, no shit. So um, um, the reason I remember it was at the county fair was because I went to the county fair that same weekend. And at the fair, they have to stamp your hand to get into the fair. And I remember she went to go stamp my hand. She's like, give me your right hand. And I was just like, uh, uh. And she's like, okay, well, I'll stamp your other hand since you're, like, injured. And I'm like, okay, there there it is. Um, but, dude, I'm I'm serious. That scar lasted a while on my right hand. Like, it was there for, I want to say, about a year. Like, it was months and months and months that took to heal. You know what I mean? And I honestly was thinking at a certain point that that was just going to be a scar that I was just going to have. Because it healed, and then there was this big bump of, like, scab tissue on my hand. And then that started to heal. But even after it started to heal, it was discolored. And I am, I am shocked it eventually went away. And you can't even see it anymore. Like, well, actually, now nah, you really can't see it anymore. But, like, that's where that was, was on my hand. And, uh, yeah, uh, it was probably, you could probably still see the mark, like, at least a year later. It was pretty bad. Yeah, that sounds dumb and creepy. Yeah, not, not my smartest move. Rich boy living dangerously, I guess. It had ground up glass in it. Yeah, they put up, they they take, when they make chewing tobacco, they grind up glass and little minute powder. Because the idea is when they put, when you put tobacco in your mouth, that glass kind of like cuts your gums and gets the nicotine in your system a lot faster. It gets that delivery into your bloodstream a lot quicker. Shit happens, yeah. I know because my dad chews tobacco and I keep telling him to stop because he's like losing teeth now, but well, what can you do? Um... Yeah, now I know why teching is an encyclopedia. It's a trauma response. I mean, maybe. I don't know. That was the last stupid thing I did in school, though, in terms of, like, you know, I think I was actually the first and last. I mean, I might have fallen for, like, the, hey, Matt, if your hand is bigger than your face, you have cancer. Wait, what it is? Oh, you know, I might have fallen for that a few times. But, like, that was probably the ABC game. was probably the stupidest thing I've ever done. Don't try that at home, kids. Don't try that at a period. It was a stupid thing to do. Do not try that. Um... You, we used rubber erasers on hands or arms instead of your fingers. Wow. I heard the uh, the salt thing. Like, uh, you put, what was it? You put, like, ice. What, no, what, what was it? You put salt on your hand and then ice, or you put ice and then salt or something, and then that's really supposed, like, that's, that does, like, a chemical reaction. I never did that. I never did that. But I also think that's also something else that'll actually, like, dissolve your skin. The ice and salt thing. Oh, God, I'm glad I never did that. No, I did the cinnamon. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I did the cinnamon challenge, too. I actually did video of that. That's on the channel. I did the cinnamon challenge way back in the day. I didn't last very long. <laughs> I didn't last very long. It wasn't fun. Um, it burns you. Oh, God. That was horrible. What is wrong with kids? I mean, I don't know, man. 
Well, it's, I'll tell you exactly what it was. I'll tell you from my perspective what it was. It was a challenge. It was, I was not a very popular kid. I was not very high up on the social hierarchy in school, especially in middle school. And, uh, you know, somebody comes up to me, TJ, who ranks a little bit higher. And it wasn't just TJ. It was a bunch of kids that kind of like, you know, were sitting around me and they'd be like, you want to play the ABC game, Matt? You bet you can't win. And I'm just like, I bet I can. And it's just that, that stupid idea of like, I need to prove myself to a bunch of people that don't give a shit about me. So I need to prove myself. How are you going to prove yourself by getting injured in this stupid game? So uh, that's really where it came from. Chubby Bunny Challenge. I I think I did Chubby Bunny. But, like, Chubby Bunny, I mean, like, I guess you could choke. You could, like, like choke on the food, but, like, on the marshmallows. But, like, it's not going to kill you. You just put marshmallows in your mouth and say Chubby Bunny. And then when you get full, you just spit it all out in a disgusting, like, blah, blah, blah. So I guess you could choke, but it's not nearly as dangerous. You're not you're not letting somebody cut into your flesh with their dirty ass fingernails. The Tide Pod challenge wasn't a thing. No, I think the no, the Tide Pod challenge, here's what it was. Here's what the Tide Pod challenge was. There was probably like one person on like Vine back cuz it was probably Vine back in the day or whatever. One stupid person that did that and then the boomers of the world painted it like this is what kids are doing these days and they want to have re- they want to have the same level of respect and um you know they want to be listened to like us adults and they're shoving tide pods in their mouths. Like that was what it was. It was the boomer generation trying to paint like every millennial as a bunch of like There we go. Okay. I don't know if you saw that. I like froze for a minute there. But yeah, no, that's what it was. It was like one or two people probably doing it, and then all of a sudden, the news blows it up. Like, well, this is what millennials are doing. They're shoving detergent in their mouths. And then everybody over the age of 50 can be like, this generation isn't like what we, oh my goodness, we gotta leave the future of America up to these millennials, these Gen Zers, shoving Tide Pods in their mouths. Wow, what's this world coming to? You know, yeah, that's, yeah, and six died. Yeah, six died, but it was every teenager. It was every millennial that was doing it. Yeah, they made it seem like it was a rampant thing, like every kid was running out and eating Tide Pods. Yeah. Oh, God, boy. (sighs) 1,077 scans will come. You want to read One Piece spoilers? Fuck it, we could read One Piece spoilers. (laughs) I already read them. I already know what's happening. I read the One Piece spoilers every week. We're ending the stream soon, so maybe if you don't want okay, if you don't want 1077 spoilers, you can you can leave. You can leave. That's your that's my cue. And after the spoilers, I'll just end the stream. So you don't you're not gonna be missing anything else. Alright, let's see what we got here. Tide Pods had that tang, though. Wait, so you weren't eating Tide Pods? Well, I was a little bit old. I was a little bit old for the Tide Pod craze. I was, like, 24 when the Tide Pod craze was really hitting. Let's see here. They added anything new. Nah. Oh, wait. Mm, Nah, there's still some stuff. The the spoilers are still kind of in there. Um, The the spoilers are still kind of... Eh, I won't read spoilers. I won't read spoilers. I'm going to get going. I'm hungry. I made some really good burgers today. I'm going to go eat the rest of those. So, um, yeah. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, We'll be back maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after that, maybe the day after that to play more Yu-Gi-Oh! Coliseum Capsule Monster Game PlayStation 2. Later, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Don't play the ABC game. Be aware. Later.